Hello there, world. Troy to the Max Extreme here. And I'm Ghost Hunter Dave. And together we form Imperious Rex. So let's uh, let's shift gears here. We're in third gear now, uh, and we're oh. going to yeah, uh, we're gonna go up a hill. So buckle <laughs> okay, up. Okay. All right. I don't know gears. Do you put it in third to go up a hill? <laughs> Who knows. <laughs> Another iteration around that same time as uh, Fantastic Four 2, I believe, where they gave us a updated modern take with the yep. Ultimate Galactus trilogy penned by yes. the infamous Warren Ellis and uh, yeah. illustrated by a slew of uh, really great artists at the time. Mm -hmm. And this was this was hot off the Ultimate Marvel Universe, which was making bank at that time. Yeah, and this was one of their big, huge crossover events too, which like encompassed like the entire universe. Fun fact: Ellis was only originally contracted to write Ultimate Nightmare, the first of three miniseries that make this Ultimate Galactus trilogy up. And mm -hmm. Mark Millar was going to take the reins from there and turn it into this big blockbuster event. And apparently he got, like, deathly ill and Ellis just took over and, you know, did his version of it. But part of mm -hmm. me is always kind of curious what the Miller version was going to be. Probably yeah. substandard okay. to Ellis's, kind of like his authority run, but I'm still <laughs> somewhat intrigued by what it was going to uh, eventually shape up to be. Because I really, really like how this kicks off with Ultimate Nightmare, but I mm -hmm. feel like his heart isn't quite in it for the middle portion, Ultimate Secret. Yeah, I, I like the iteration, or at least the reinvention of this, and I do think it starts out strong. And it feels mm -hmm. ominous. Um, it is horrifying. Grand... Like, this is almost a straight <laughs> yeah. horror story, at least for the first arc. Yeah. Um, and I like where it goes. I don't remember much of the middle at all. Like you said, it, it, it's a, a tad middling, and I don't think his heart was in it. But, like, I mm -hmm. do like this version of the ultimate nullifier. Like, I think it's, like, a, a genius idea. Yeah, I think there's a lot of really good stuff in this. So, right off the bat, um, you don't know this is setting up a Galactus appearance until the last issue of the first arc. Whereas mm -hmm. before, it's only been touted as Ultimate Nightmare. And it's essentially a broadcast is being sent across the world of, like, dying planets just being obliterated and alien races and it's almost like the ring a cosmic version of the ring tape where people yeah. see it and it drives <laughs> them to kill themselves and there's like some really haunting like pages and pages in the first issue of people just around the world committing suicide or freaking out just because mm -hmm. like this imagery that they're seen through broadcasts or people with like psychic abilities it's just going right into their brain and making them go crazy to the right. point where shield uh sends in a team and professor x send in a team because they think it's a mutant somewhere that's doing this and they both uh, converge <laughs> in russia in this underground bunker in tungeska i think that's how you pronounce it where in actual, like, real history, there was, like, a comet or something that landed there and just created this massive hole. So they kind of take a little piece of history and then put this fictional spin on it. They go to investigate what it is and find a bunker where the Soviets were trying to create basically their own version of Captain America. By doing so, they've created this whole underground prison full of, like, patchwork mutants and machine people that they yeah. <laughs> used machinery to and left them there to rot after i think the cold war and you find out that the pieces that they've been using have been pulled off of a, a robot messenger who we find out is the vision and vision yeah. came here a hundred years ago with a warning that galactus is coming and they just ignored it and started hacking him up and piecing him to all these test subjects to create, like, a Captain America for Russia. 
Which yeah. I think is but, a brilliant idea. Like, I love yeah. that premise. With, like, it totally reinventing the vision to be, like, some warning. Yeah. Um, that was, that yeah. was pretty cool. Yeah, they reinvent a shit ton in this. Even the Red Guardian is in this. Is this Soviet Captain America who's been sitting there waiting for 60 years to fight him. And he's just deranged. He's made a shield out of human faces. Yeah. <laughs> just yeah. extremely <laughs> gruesome. But yeah, and then they find Vision there. He's hacked apart, and he utters the phrase Galactus, which in the Cree dialect is, that's what they call him, Galactus. But it's mm -hmm. coming, and it's going to tear it up. So yep. then it jumps on to Ultimate Secret, where we learn a little bit more about the Cree, and we get Ultimate Captain Marvel, who I think mm -hmm. is the best iteration of Captain Marvel. I love his costume in this. Oh, yeah. And, uh... Steve McNiven does the artwork for the beginning of this series, and it's yep. just fantastic. Yeah, I love that design for Captain Marvel. I love it. <laughs> so cool. And the action in those first couple issues is so good before they do yep. kind of like a weird little space adventure that wraps up extremely quickly before jumping into the last part of this trilogy where uh, Brandon Peterson, I believe, does the art duties. And this is such a weird art shift. Do you remember yeah. this and like the the really yeah. bizarre like cross hatching shading style? Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of his artwork because it looks like he just takes 3D models and just traces them, and that's why yeah. it looks so weird. Like everything's on model, but like it's the it's it's the hatching and everybody looks like super stiff. Like they don't feel yes. like they're in motion at all. Like. I don't know. It's this kind of the same I have with uh, Michael Jannon, who does Batman with uh, yeah, with Tom King. Same kind of yeah, I'd agree same with same kind of thing. So bizarre. I don't think I've ever seen shading like this. Yeah, I don't. I don't care for it. <laughs> but I don't. I don't either. <laughs> uh, but uh, artwork aside, I think there's still some cool stuff in this, especially the Silver Surfer being like this yep. weird like doomsday prophet and yep. uh just like how horrific he gets where he's got like teeth behind teeth and almost like a xenomorph style jaw system that they oh play. yeah i totally forgot about that yeah when he like totally freaks out and opens his mouth and he just looks like i don't even know like a garbage disposal in there or something like that yeah. he looks he's got like, like four <laughs> rows of chompers <laughs> yeah yeah uh I, yeah. but i i I, I wasn't quite sure if I liked that or not, because it's such a departure from the Silver Surfer, which I like. And I want to mm -hmm. say they they don't use this version in the Ultimate Fantastic Four later on in its series. They, it's kind of like the classic, for the most part, yeah. Silver Surfer. It's a little bit different, but... Yeah, I think they even kind of like do a soft retcon where they say the Galactus Swarm saw that silver surfer character who i think they called the silver searcher in the ultimate universe and mm. use like his physiology to create these drones that he spits oh. out that makes so that's on that fine, note i guess galactus himself <laughs> is a extremely big redesign on this and in this rather than the the generic uh purple big guy he's a swarm of like skyscraper sized robotic insects that just go mm -hmm. from planet to planet and, like, just obliterate it. I think they dissolve yeah. the flesh of everyone there and then drill into the surface and suck the planet yeah. dry. And every insect module yeah. kind of has, like, the shape of the Galactus headdress. Yeah, I'm on the fence about that. Like, I like that they made reference to the initial, like, silhouette of Galactus, but at the same time, like, they're a big robotic swarm that devours planets for what like what are, like i don't know their end goal besides just destroying stuff i guess like, yeah robots serve a like master a, <laughs> right <laughs> i think they say the kree created them in this mm. i reread it and there's like a throwaway line where they say that they were created by the kree and then they like got sentience and took over god the kree are always up to no good you know what what are They're we doing here a with the Kree? Bunch of pricks. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> they designed a pretty great Captain Marvel uniform, though. I'll give them that. Well, <laughs> then, before we uh, jump off on that, you mentioned the Ultimate Nullifier. 
what's uh what's the take on this oh so the ultimate nullifier is pretty much a cannon that reed richards develops that shoots a big bang from a just emerging universe out of it and i'm like that yes is a cool ass idea i love that idea <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah, so it essentially, does it obliterate <coughs> that universe then? Because everyone is having a hard time dealing with this, and they didn't deal, go into enough detail where, like, why is this a horrific act of nature? Is it destroying that universe that he's launching? Like, he's just sacrificing an entire burgeoning universe to ward off Galactus? Yeah, that's, that's essentially how I took it. Like, they sacrificed an entire universe just to shoot a beam up into the sky to yeah. thwart off the galactus horde yeah yeah but either that's way brilliant. like <laughs> it's a it's a brilliant idea and even if you want to like extrapolate on that more what's coming down with foresight like he becomes the maker and so like yeah. why not just have <laughs> this megalomaniac reed richards have like a little seed planted here like i'll just destroy an entire universe like why oh, not yeah. i'll just chalk yeah. one up to like do whatever so yeah he wrestles with it for a while and he doesn't want to give it to fury and then by the time he does go full like villain in the ultimate universe he's just like had it with the government like just i think he constantly repeats the phrase like you're raping nature you're raping the planet so he's just he's had enough and yeah. then he proceeds to go and rape it further but it's, <laughs> yeah, uh, he's obviously yeah. past the tipping point at this at this stage mm -hmm. So, um, right. so yeah, that is the ultimate Galactus version, and for a long time, that's it. Other than there's a follow-up little epilogue piece um, by Mike Carey and Brandon Peterson that follows Vision, where she encounters one of the damaged modules, and we also get our introduction of Ultimate MODOK, <laughs> through a, a manner oh, baby. of speaking. <laughs> yes. Um, and that one's okay. It's a nice little tail end piece for it. But then Galactus is absent from the Ultimate Universe for quite some time until the, um, the infamous Cataclysm. This spins out of Age of Ultron, where they fucked with time so bad that they created a rift, and Galactus yeah. just steps on through, and now he's in the Ultimate Universe. The Galactus Swarm is still roaming around. It sees him, he basically assimilates them, and now they're like super Galactus. Yeah. And he's um, hungry. He. <laughs> so this is the first time that the 616 and the Ultimate Universe ever met each other, right? Because mm, they touted for almost. the longest... Spider-Man. They did Spider-Man first. Oh, yeah, you're right. But they um, reference Spider-Man in this as saying, this is the second time we've ever done this. <laughs> Remember Spider-Man? <laughs> yeah. They, the Ultimate Universe is touted as like it would never cross over with the 616. It's its own separate thing. But near the end of the Ultimate Universe, where sales were dipping, there's not a whole lot going on, and it kind of feels like they're trying to wrap it up. That's what Cataclysm felt like to me, is that they're trying to oh, just yeah. get rid of the Ultimate Universe... And just kind of see what still works. And and after the Cataclysm came out, there were only three titles that ran in the Ultimate Universe yep. at all. It was the yep. Miles Morales Spider-Man. It was the uh, the Ultimates. And it was the, the Ultimate FF, which I don't yep. even know what that is. <laughs> I've never read it that. Is, uh, but the other two it titles... It is so bizarre. Oh, you've read it? Yeah, I have them all. I... Uh, a couple years ago, I read every Ultimate book in order, Whew. and Holy it was a trip. <laughs> I bet it was. Towards the end, towards the end, I I mean, they should have just ended it with Cataclysm, because nothing well, after Cat Cataclysm, barring the Miles Morales books, are always consistently good, but nothing yep. else is worth extending, and then they just wrap it up in Secret Wars anyway. So this would have been a bigger send-off for him if they could yeah, like, but go down fighting Galactus or something. Why at that it's point? It's all anyway. over the place. W at it's, that point, it no is. one cared. No one was driving the ship. No. Like, there was huge inconsistencies. <laughs> like Captain America dies in this cataclysm, but I think he pops up in 
uh, Ultimate End. Same with Punisher yeah. and a few others yeah. where it's just like nobody is even reading their own titles anymore where they're not, <laughs> they don't even know who's alive or dead at this point. I don't even really have much to say about Galactus in this besides I like that the fabric of reality has deteriorated so much that he just like opens it up and it just steps steps through this tear in the universe which <laughs> yes. I don't think I've ever seen him do before maybe I I maybe I don't know but I thought it was pretty cool to like pretty much come down and wreak havoc it's like oh what's going on over here I'm kind of hungry <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know what I mean <laughs> but otherwise cataclysm was a, a, like a little I don't know a little underwhelming for me Troy one last stop on our Galactus fun train, we're mm -hmm. gonna do a quick departure from the Ultimate Station and head straight back into the Marvel 616 universe as we take a look at the Ultimates. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. So, uh. <laughs> this is stemming out of uh, Secret Wars by Jonathan Hickman. Uh, as the Marvel Universe itself is rewritten as a result. And the Ultimates is now the moniker that some of the biggest brains and most powerful hitters of the Marvel Universe are adopting. And what a weird team this is, Troy. Yes, I actually have never heard of Blue Marvel before, before this book. Um, and so I was glad to see what he was all about. Um, Monica Rambeau, I knew a, a little bit about, but I didn't know she was such, like, a heavy hitter. Same with, like, America Chavez. And, mm -hmm. uh, and also with Black Panther and Captain Marvel in the mix. Like, it's got a huge, powerful cast. And to the point where I didn't even know, like, some were so powerful. Like, these are the heavy, heavy, heavy hitters of the Marvel Universe. Like, so much so that they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with cosmic entities. And I'm like, holy yeah. shit, how did this... How, when did it make this jump to, like, these people are so powerful? But <laughs> either way, like, it... I, I still dug the cast overall. It's like a multicultural cast. There's only one white uh, person in it, which is refreshing to see. I loved... And that she's it's a huge like, bitch, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Huge bitch, right? No, she's not. She a bitch, you know. That's that's the joke on Captain Marvel. She's yeah, pretty. Yeah. She's pretty fine through most of it, but unfortunately, I think her character kind of gets shit on in uh, lieu of Civil War Two, which was happening about halfway yeah. through this, and she yeah. kind of like suddenly has a, a turncoat change there for like plot yeah. reasons rather than character reasons. Yeah. Um, yeah. But. Uh, so this is Al Ewing. This is, like, the first... Th well, no, it's not the first thing. It's the only other thing I've read from Ewing besides Immortal Hulk. And yep. it holds up to that, I'd say. It's not horror-centric, but right. I would say this is, like, follows in the footsteps of some of the best, like, high-concept, fun science fiction works yes what it really reminded me of it reminded me of like warren ellis at his best where mm. it felt mm -hmm. like planetary felt like the authority and it felt like next wave but without like his we're just a bunch of tough guys and we're a bunch of dicks <laughs> you know <laughs> that <laughs> attitude that all his characters just constantly have to remind uh. the reader of like yeah I've got yep. five PhDs and I kick ass, you know, like these guys <laughs> yep. all do that, but they don't have to say it. You just get it through their actions. It's not like constantly right. telling you how tough they are. So that right. was refreshing. It, it felt like a really good, like a high concept action adventure sci-fi. Yeah, for sure. I, and, and then coming off of Secret Wars and like everything that Hickman laid before it, it, it feels like in line with that heavy idea, like, ultra-powerful, like, Hickman stuff as well. So, like, it's not... It, it, it feels right in line with the stuff that I was really digging up into Secret Wars, which I also liked, but then I kind of fell off after that, and, like, knowing that this is after that, it really got me yeah. kind of invested of, like, well, what's kind of going on around the same time? 
It's it's unfortunate though that the four trades that this does span, it it goes through two other events that happened as well. Yes. Oh my god, I know. Part of me was like, should I read these other shit events? <laughs> so I know like exactly what's going on, but I'm like, I'll get to them sometime. I don't want to like yeah. diminish my enjoyment of this book by like feeling I have to shoehorn in an event that I know is not going to live up to this book that I'm reading. Right. We already have a podcast that's dedicated to those, okay? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll I get think to we those. hit that fatigue about a month ago. <laughs> Um, but, uh, but no, this but is I, so good, but yes, it totally, like, those two events just throw a fucking wrench right in the gears, and yeah. you can tell, like, he had things going on, and then he just had to, like, turn on a dime, and, like, it's, the story still works, but it's just, it doesn't seem as natural as it should have played out. Yeah, I, I did want to read Civil War 2 after I finished the second trade, and I have started Civil War 2, and I don't hate it yet, but it's just... I felt like to get the grand scope of what I needed to understand, I should have read it, and I didn't. And yeah, even yeah, there's quite I, a few character deaths. I think that they just like just mention offhandedly, and I'm like, oh wait, what? Luckily, none yeah. of them are terribly important in this book. But just right. like in the scope of the Marvel universe, you're like, oh, that happened between this issue and this issue. Yeah, even still now, like in Immortal Hulk, they're bringing up stuff that happened in Civil War 2. And I'm like, you've already gone through another event since then. Like, what is yeah. going on? <laughs> yeah. They still bring up uh, Hawkeye killing the Hulk in Civil War 2. Yeah. Well, in, in Immortal in, Hulk, I feel like that would come up. Well, I, I get it. But it's like, at this point, however many years removed. But anyway, that's... that's anyway. It's, it's besides the point. Neither here nor there. Yes. No. Um, um, so let's talk about why we're talking about this book. <laughs> Oh, sure. Yeah, we should do that. <laughs> All right. So, in this, these guys are basically almost like the extension of Reed Richards on his Solve Everything mission, where they decide, yep. like, right off the bat, front and center, we're going to solve all the universe's problems, starting with that uh, that big hungry bastard floating around in space, wreaking <laughs> yep. havoc, Galactus. They are going to cure him of his insatiable hunger, and sure enough, they do. And then he's like, yeah. all right, thanks, I guess. And off he goes <laughs> with a new gold paint finish and the moniker, yep. the Life Giver? Life, the life Bringer? bringer. Yeah. Something like that? Yep. Yeah. Yep. And off he goes for the uh, the extent of the run, which I really liked. I thought for yes. sure they were going to have to kind of revert to status quo, which I think does inevitably happen later. But in this four trade series... Galactus is still the life bringer and he's a good guy. And I'm like, cool, yeah. refreshing. I like that. Yes, I, I liked it a lot. I love that they they are such powerhouses that he, Galactus is a member of their team. Like, yes. he just talks to them like normal people. And I'm like, my God, my God, this guy. Just, <laughs> oh my God. And to the hey, point, Black like, this Panther. is... Yeah. <laughs> Kind of Black feeling Panther. hungry again. Can you, uh, <laughs> can you come over? Maybe, uh, talk me down. Yeah. Black Panther is OPAF in this, in this book. Oh. Um, like, he, he dude, was Black in... Black Panther in, yeah, from Secret Wars and the Avengers run and onto this, he is a fantastic character. Right. They go places with him that I never expected, and I love his character, in this and I love that he's a part of the team like he's this like monarch also the superhero and he like balances all of these things and like he's also really competent in everything that he does and at a point where he and doesn't he even a need a dual suit. identity <laughs> he has that dual identity that he <laughs> dishes out when he yes. meets Carol in the coffee shop <laughs> <laughs> yes he does I mean he's uh, balancing all of these things balancing all these plates and he does it exquisitely you know what i mean yes yeah so this reminded me a bit of um hickman's like illuminati you know that mm -hmm. that group and black panther was a carryover from that you know you get like the big brains but these ones also happen to be like some of the most powerful physically as well yeah and not not like mentally you know where they had like professor x and reed richards and dr strange but these guys are all like brutes 
essentially. Yeah. Like, especially yeah. Uh, America Chavez, who I know virtually nothing about, but I really liked her character in this. And she so seemed to be almost like the dark horse contender of this whole book, where I'm like, mm-hmm. oh my god, like, I feel like I need to read some of her stuff. Yeah, I, I kind of wanted to go back and see where she was introduced and see what, what what's going on with her. I know she had, like, an ongoing title around the same time this was coming out as well. I don't know how long it went, but I kind of wanted to check it out. And I also love, too, that it was it was playing around with, like, the cosmic entities and the ongoing, like, mystery of, like, who uh, chained up Eternity. Like, the cosmic yeah. entity Eternity, who has him in shackles, and, like, who's the big mastermind behind that that's going out through almost yes. all all four books and it it's a mystery up until the last one and i'm like oh my god yeah. like this is a really interesting i i loved that they played with all these hugely conceptual ideas and brought them back into like a way that i guess i actually haven't seen done except in like maybe like a swamp thing or other like DC titles, yeah. Like I yeah. felt, I I felt like like even though like uh, I love the story in this, it is a little bit reminiscent of like the DC multiverse kind of stuff, where like the DC has, uh, the DC universe has like all these multiverses, and it has like the bleed between universes that was done in Planetary, and this yep. kind of had the same thing, where it had like the super flow. And it had the edges of the outer universe where all these other things are being held. And it's very similar to that effect. But mm-hmm. that doesn't mean I like it any less. I love that no, they can I'm... have ideas like that to play with. Yeah, Al Ewing always struck me as more of like a DC writer. Just based on these two books. Uh, Hulk, <laughs> which is very Swamp Thing. And this, which uh, encompassed all those things you just said. Like bits of swamp thing and then some of those other like crises and everything yeah um but yeah i loved seeing all these like old gods and celestials and all that parts of Mm -hmm. the marvel universe that i have very limited understanding and background on and anytime Mm -hmm. they pop up without like a full thing dedicated to explaining them i'm like i'm lost but this does a very (laughs) good job of getting you like up to speed and also giving you a really good like roadmap of the entire timeline of the Marvel existence as a whole, where we're in like oh, yeah. the eighth iteration of their universe, which is yes. really cool. And we're like right at the beginning, I think they talk about that, how this previous like unknown element had seven uh, components or whatever. In this new one, it has eight. So they're like, I think we're in the eighth iteration of the universe based on these findings. And yep. yeah, then you just find out that like after uh, Secret Wars, that's what restarted it, and it's happened before, and it's gonna happen again. Like the universe just has this big, you know, white event or whatever, and everything goes yep. back to zero. Yeah, and he does such a good job, kind of conveying that concept. Yes, and it's and it, it, it had me Galactus thinking too, just punching out uh, <laughs> order and chaos. Just oh, punching yes. their big fucking heads in. I just <laughs> love that. It might be one of the best pages in this where he just decks them. So what did you think of uh, kind of the wrap-up here where we bring in another familiar face from the actual Ultimate Universe and we get an appearance from Evil Reed Richards, the maker, and he brings in a, a uh, reformation of the Ultimates, again, to fight with the Marvel 616 Ultimates. And yeah. they have a, a very quick little throwdown and then decide, like, you know what? We're your friends. They have a Martha moment where they're like, you're the Ultimates? Yeah. I'm oh, the yeah. Ultimates. What are we <laughs> fighting for? <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, then, uh, and then it goes into the full Cosmic War. But I did enjoy the fact that um, in the... the original numbering which marvel loves to toss out anytime they hit a milestone issue the final issue of the ultimates is actually the 100th issue of the ultimates title so they bring in the original ultimate team so to speak oh and it ends very open-ended there where uh they like they the remaining reincarnated ultimates team members blast off into the multiverse to like go sightsee i guess and uh, 
it seems like ever since the Ultimate Universe did get the door closed on it, there's been a couple writers that I think did enjoy it a lot, and they keep kind of planting these little seeds where if anyone wanted to pick up and restart it, there's a few different instances that they could do so. I, I guess I didn't even realize that... I saw that it was issue 100, but I'm like, what are they doing? Like, I sometimes they marvel, like, just numbers stuff funny, like, to me. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, that's just... It's the last one. It's going to be 100. Whatever. I didn't actually know it was yeah. the 100th issue of the initial Ultimate run. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. The last... Yep. The last issue of this is very ultimate-y, if, I, if, that, if I'd use that as a word. Not only yes. is it the ultimate versus ultimate team, but then Galactus makes his ultimate ultimates oh, yes. <laughs> at the very end. His and I'm like, oh my god. god. Squad. <laughs> yeah. Um, which I kind of wanted to know more about uh, the that, uh, that cosmic astronaut or whatever. It, is this the first oh, appearance yeah. of him? I can't yeah, remember what? what his name is right now, but, like, he kind of showed up in Black Panther and the Ultimates, like, pulled him out into the world yes. so he can, like, exist here. But then, like, he didn't appear again until later, and I, I don't know if he shows up in anything else, but, like, I really wanted to know more about him, and he just doesn't really do much of anything. But he's super yeah. cool looking. <laughs> oh, I know. I, I got the feeling that he was, like, maybe some kind of Stan Lee, Jack Kirby character from, like, way back. But uh, just yeah. knowing that Galactus and his god squad is out patrolling the multiverse is, like, an amazing thing now that's happening in Marvel. And they can just play with Makes that anytime they safer. want. Makes me sleep safer. Yeah. for sure. <laughs> yeah. But, I don't even uh, know if that's still the case. Like, maybe they've, you know turn Galactus evil again. I'm not sure, but I love that concept. Yeah. It seems like you could do so much with that. Yeah. They can be, like, the new... the Almost like the new Celestials. I'm surprised, like, the if it still is around, which I don't know, because I only dip into Marvel, like, every couple of years. But mm -hmm. then... It, the, the, the Dan Slott's Fantastic Four, they've been doing cosmic adventures almost his whole run, and they haven't yeah. run into them yet. So, like, maybe he's just keeping that in his back pocket. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't exist anymore. I don't know. Yeah. Regardless, yeah. What cool was, idea. What was the ghost that was haunting Galactus's ship that apparently was, uh, he was, like, one of the first gods or something like that, and they mentioned that oh. he was in Dan Slott's Silver Surfer. Yeah, he was the shaper of worlds. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the yeah, Dan Slott's I mean, Silver Surfer run. Lot. Yeah. I almost suggested to also read the Dan Slott's Silver Surfer run for this too, but that now was a lot to throw into this episode. But oh. um, that is... I I love that title, and we should do it as an episode sometime, um, because totally. I think it's super yeah. fun. Oh yeah, I've been wanting to, and this kind of lit that fire of this big Marvel cosmic stuff, so maybe sooner rather than later we do that one. So that wraps up Ultimates. Um, any other great Galactus stories that we may have missed? I got one for you, Troy. And we covered this way back when with our Hickman, Hickmania trilogy. But I, I can't help but bring it up again. How great was it when Franklin Richards comes a call oh, in, in Fantastic Oh, I already know what you're going to say. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, utters those words to me, my oh. Galactus, and you find out Galactus is the herald of the future Franklin Richards. I mean, that's I... one of my all-time favorite <laughs> Galactus moments. It's so good. It's so good. I, I'm so glad you brought that up. <laughs> oh my god. If I could shout I was afraid again. I was going to forget it. Yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad I remembered it as well, or else you'd have to come oh. all the way back here and re-record this. <laughs> <laughs> and then on oh. that same note uh just recently mark wade and um javier rodriguez did mm. the history of the marvel universe this it's been collected in this great oversized treasury edition and it is basically it's kind of what we were talking about with the ultimates it is like a whole literal history uh, as the title says of the marvel universe from like the first inception till now and it's all being recounted 
to Franklin Richards by a dying Galactus at the end of this current universe's lifespan as it's about to be reborn into the next, where Galactus oh. is going to die and only Franklin is going to continue on. So as it's happening, Franklin's like, Galactus, tell me a story. And he does. He tells him the <laughs> longest story in the world with so many retcons. But I, uh, it's another kind of cool Galactus I, moment where, like, those two are just, like, they've survived. They've outlived everything, and they have just this bond that it seems like was formed in Hickman's Fantastic Four run there. Oh, uh, I'm glad you said that. I, I have that. I bought it on Comixology, and I've yet to read it, but I am looking forward to a lot right now. I love Franklin and Galactus together. I think it's an awesome pairing. But like yes. so I I'm also keeping current with Slot's run on Fantastic 4 and it just yeah. doesn't I still like it but it's not holding a candle to what Hickman did and mm. I just am missing that like heavy sci-fi like grandiose like adventure story. Yeah. Oh, it was just God. so high concept. Like, I had yep. to put it down and think on it for a while <laughs> while I was reading that. I was just like, I need to, like, my body has to let my mind catch up <laughs> before I flip the pages. <laughs> that was so yeah. good. Man, I could yeah. go and just reread his entire Marvel run. It was just phenomenal. Oh, my God. You say that, and I know we, like, read, like, 200 <laughs> should, issues or whatever of it. <laughs> should we do Hickmania again? <laughs> Are we doing be? this? <laughs> are we doing this is that the next episode we're just doing those episodes again <laughs> yeah yeah oh and then God. we don't watch the previous ones and we just talk about the exact same thing <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah so that's that's what we got for galactus folks uh if we My missed Lord. anything is we... that enough isn't it enough <laughs> did we not entertain you if yeah. that is not enough let us know in the comments down below if we missed anything Galactus centric for you. Because I am I am in a mood. Galactus mm. is a mood himself. A mood. And I want to read food. more. You've got the hunger. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to read more Galactus stuff right now. So let us know in the comments down below. Even if you just want to chime in on any of the titles that we talked about today. But until right. next time, Dave. It's been nice yes. talking to you in this. While the world is still burning, it's been nice talking oh. to you. <laughs> but uh, I have been Troy to the Max Extreme. And I've been Ghost Hunter Dave. And we'd like to and... thank our uh, our guest cameos here yes. from uh, the friends of the show, Danica, Sal, and the guys at Comic Pop, and the mysterious third member of Imperius Rex, Dinosaur Neil himself. Thanks, That's right. everybody, for chiming in, making this That's right. a truly Galactus-sized special. Oh, you bet. So I raise a glass to Galactus himself, wash you that mm. earth down with a little sip of whiskey, uh, <laughs> and I bid you adieu. But we have been Imperious Rex, and we'll see you next time. Bye bye <laughs>